deploy storage spaces on a standalone server. Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of the video series that covers in and out of storage spaces. In the first part, we spoke about storage spaces. Why would small business users love storage spaces? benefits of storage spaces, limitations of storage spaces, its performance, and some other things that you should be knowing about storage spaces. In the second part, I'm going to show you how you can create a storage pool on a standalone server. To create a storage space, you must first create one or more storage pools. So what is a storage pool? A storage pool is a collection of physical disks. Let's say I have six physical disks in this JBOD. Using those six physical disks I can create a storage pool and on top of it I can create storage spaces. Storage spaces they are nothing but virtual disks. So on top of virtual disks, I can create logical volumes. So a storage pool is a collection of physical disks and from a storage pool, you can create one or more virtual disks. So these virtual disks are referred as storage spaces. Before we create a storage space, we should create a storage pool. So what are the prerequisites for creating storage pool? So let's talk about disk bus types. Uh, what it means, uh, the physical hard drives that you're going to use for, for creating storage pools, it should be either SAS disks or SATA disks. You can also use a USB drives but it's not recommended to use the USB drives because it might slow down the performance of your storage pool. Now with storage pool you cannot use iSCSI or fiber channel disks. And about the disk configuration the physical disks must be at least 4 GB in size and they should be blank not formatted and there shouldn't be any volumes created on it. For HBA consideration, we recommend that you use HBAs that do not support any RAID functionality. What it means, if there's any kind of RAID functionality on your HBAs, it should be completely disabled. And for JBOT enclosures, it is optional. And for full storage space functionality you need to verify that your storage vendors JBOD uh, supports such uh, storage spaces. To verify that you need to run this PowerShell command and if the enclosure number and the slot number fields contain values then it indicates that the JBOD enclosure supports storage spaces. Create a storage pool in this demo, we'll first create a storage pool. So as a prerequisite, we already have six physical disks which are unallocated. Each disk is of 4 GB in size and the disk type is SAS. These requirements should be good enough to create a storage pool. Alright, so to create a storage pool, First, I'll open the server manager and I'll click on file and storage services node and then I'll click on storage pools page and by default all the available disks are included in a pool called primordial. So you can see here I have a default pool which is called primordial and all the available physical disks are listed in this pool. If you don't see this pool or if you don't see the disks in this pool then it means that your disks are not meeting the requirements that are outlined in the prerequisite section. So if you select the primordial 
you can see all the available disks that are listed under physical disks. All right, so let's go ahead and create a storage pool. I'll click on tasks, which is on the top right side, and I'll click on new storage pool, and the new storage pool wizard opens up. So I'll click next, and I'll specify a name and the description. For the name I would type finance storage pool and for the description I'll type this storage pool is used by finance department. And I'll select the default storage group which is primordial group and I'll click next. Alright from here you can select the checkbox next to each physical disk that you want to include in the storage pool in the newly storage pool that we are going to create and if you want to designate one or more disk as a hot spares under allocation you can do that so again hot spares are reserved disks for replacing a failed disk in the storage pool so I can select three physical disks and for the first two I'll keep the allocation as automatic and the last one I can select as hot spare. So if one of the first two physical disks fails, then the third physical disk will automatically become active. In my case, I'll select all three physical disks and the allocation for all three physical disks will be automatic. So it means I'm not going, I'm not going to use any hot spare. I'll click next again. Okay, on the confirm selections page, you can verify that the settings are correct and then click create. And on view results page, you can verify that the task completed and then click close. Before you do that, you see there's an optional setting. If you check this option, you can create a virtual disk when this wizard closes. So in my case, I'll uncheck this and I'll click close. So now on the storage pool, you can see the newly created storage pool called finance storage pool. And under physical disks, you can see the three physical disks that we have selected. Okay, this concludes the second part of the video series that talks about creating a storage pool to group all available physical disks into a storage pool. In the third part of the video series, I'm going to show you how you can create virtual disks using an available storage group and what are the options you can set for the virtual disks. Thanks for watching the video and for more videos, please subscribe to my channel.